So last week we explored what the is an ETF and this week we're going to look at how to choose an ETF that aligns with your investment objectives, with your personal values and of course offers a return on investment. So while we can't provide financial advice specific to your personal circumstance, we hope that this will give you lots of food for thought and the key indicators to start comparing different ETFs that you're interested in and making some exciting investment decisions for your future. So how to choose an ETF. You may now have some cash stashed away for a rainy day and any short term goals. And now you're ready to squirrel some money away for future you. Not retired you, because of course we all understand the tax benefits of popping that cash into super. But future you in say 10 or, or 20 years time. Perhaps to give you the chance to cut down on your working hours as you near retirement age. Maybe to help with children's education, a career break, to build a, tree, a dream home or go on a travel adventure. So I take it that you've probably heard a bit about exchange traded funds or ETFs, maybe even um, just on our blog and video last week, and you've decided they sound all right. So now what? How do you find a fund that's right for you? First of all, here's a few things to consider. So the first one is you need an online share trading account in order to invest in an ETF. So um, if you haven't got one of these already, you can set up an account. It's free to set up using any of um, the online share trading platforms that are available. For more information uh, in module six of our Money and Mindset program, you might like to visit that. Otherwise, more information on comparing fees, trading options, support features of the different um, platforms that are available. Check out some comparison sites such as Finder or Mozo, or, and they'll take you through. The key thing is, I suppose, um, as a casual investor, to find uh, um, a platform that offers probably uh, uh, the brokerage fee of less than $20 per trade. So the second thing to consider is, of course, your personal investment options and um, objectives, sorry, and time frame. So before you make an investment, it's good to have a plan. Think about how much money you want to invest, how long you want to have your money invested for, what your appetite for risk is versus you know, um, the potential for returns. The government's Money Smart website has some great advice for setting out an investment plan, or if you're a Verve Super member, um, check out the Money and Mindset program. Module five and six um, talk a lot about investing, and even module one talks a lot about setting your financial goals and, and looking at your different priorities over the different timeframes through your life, and that, is such a key part to influencing how um, how and what you invest in um, each time you make an investment decision. So the third thing to consider is creating diversification from the get-go. So of course, um, you've probably heard this many times before, diversification is, is a really important aspect of investing because it helps to limit the risk of having all your eggs in one basket. So to create diversification, look for an ETF that gives you exposure to a wide range of companies, industries, regions. There's lots of ways to create um, diversification. The next thing to consider is letting your values inspire your investing choices. So I'll include a link in the comments below to another article that helps you, uh, that has a really great exercise in it that will help you define your values and give you some different ideas about the types of industries and, and companies you might want to explore from an investment um, 
perspective because of course if you want um, an investment in an ETF to be an ethical investment it's important to start with defining what does ethical mean to you so it also the article this extra article will also explain some important terms often used in ethical investing such as positive and negative screening the next thing to consider and more of an action is to create a watch list so you can find a full list of ETFs available on the Australian Stock Exchange or ASX. Um, I'll also include this link in the comments below, but it's a big list. So maybe the best way to start is to create a watch list of ETFs that you're interested in, maybe inside your share trading account. So you can use your watch list to become familiar with some of the ETFs you're interested in and their performance before making a purchase. So think of a watch list like a reading list. It'd be great to buy all the books we want to read all at once, but due of course to budget and time constraints, we generally only buy you know, one or two books at a time. So you can apply this same principle to buying shares, which could help you stick to your investment plan as we discussed above also. And buying small parcels of shares regularly over time is actually a risk management strategy called dollar cost averaging. So again, check out um, module six in the Money Mindset program for a full rundown if you'd like to um, explore that concept more. So now we've found a few diversified funds that match your values or aligned with areas of knowledge or interest. Maybe you've even run your eyes over the, um, the stock, full stock exchange list and um, just pick them from, from their names. It doesn't, it doesn't matter when you're starting and when you're just purely comparing a watch list, it's just about learning. And then once we do the comparison that we're about to do, we, um, it'll become much clearer to you on what uh, funds uh, seem appropriate to your um, and fit with your investment objectives. So what's next? Here's a checklist um, that you can go through and in the supporting blog, we, um, we'll put a full comparison table. Um, but really we're gonna be comparing fees, um, something called the buy sell spread, performance, tracking error, issuer or fund manager reputation and size. So let me explain some of these, um, these financial terms. Let's start with fees and the buy sell spread. So one of the simplest ways to compare ETFs is their cost. Small differences in fees can make substantial differences over, um, over the long term. So the manager of the ETF will charge a fee of course, to manage the fund. It's sometimes referred to as the management expense ratio. So this fee is generally taken out of um, your returns before they're deposited into your account. So when you see a statement related to investment performance saying net of all fees, it means that this is the amount of return you earned on your investment after the fees have been paid. Um, and so the management fee charge will depend a lot on whether the ETF is actively or passively managed. So generally, and this is, um, um, the ETFs are passively managed. So this um, is why they tend to be quite a cost effective way um, to invest because their management fees are kept to a minimum because there's less human capital required to manage the fund because of course they're tracking an index. So next, the next thing where your um, fees or costs can, um, can be influenced is through the buy sell spread. So this is the difference between the highest price that a buyer is willing to pay for um, an ETF unit and the lowest price in which the issuer is happy to sell the ETF unit. So you should always read the PDS or product disclosure statement provided by the ETF issuer for a, a full explanation of the different fees and costs um, that will apply. 
And um, and also just remember in terms of costs, that trading costs or your brokerage fees are separate to your investment management costs. So your brokerage fees are charged directly from your um, share trading account. And um, as I said earlier, for a casual investor, many trading accounts offer fees for under $20 per trade. Um, and this is important to be aware, this fee is charged every time you buy or sell um, shares. So the next thing, that's costs. The next thing is performance. So of course, ETFs come in all shapes and sizes and carry different levels of risk depending on um, the type of assets they, they track. So for example, while an ETF focused on resource stocks, for example, might offer the potential for higher returns, it also comes with a higher risk attached than an ETF, say for example, that tracks the top 200 um, companies on the, on the ASX. So in addition, because of this passive management, ETFs generally don't offer as much potential for above market performance as actively managed funds. So this is where your watch list can come into play. To check out an ETF's performance before you make a purchase, you wanna look if there's any correlation between the management fees and the performance. So for example, a higher than average investment management fee might be worth it if the ETF has consistently provided good returns on, um, on investment. But remember, past performance is not always a reliable indicator of future performance. Um, but you always want to look at the relationship between these um, fees and, um, and the performance to date. So the next concept um, or thing we want to look at when we're when we're analysing an ETF is a tracking error. So while many standard ETFs are designed to mimic the performance of you know a specific market index, they won't exactly replicate what the um, the index does, and this is known as tracking error. And it occurs obviously because fees, taxes, a range of other factors can influence that value of, of an ETF. Um, and so this is something when you're comparing um, different ETFs that you can um, look at that gross return of an index and the ETF um, net return, you know, after fees and, and you can look if there is large differences in the performance between the ETF and the index it's tracking, it could signal poor fund management or excessive trading costs. Um, so that's why it's important to check out the fund manager or issuer. So this is the next thing we want to compare. So an issuer or fund managers track record and experience managing um, index investments is of course worthy of consideration when we're um, evaluating ETFs. So when you click through from the ASX list or from your share trading account, you'll land on the ETF's issuers website. So ETF issuers are the fund managers or businesses that build and issue the ETFs to the public via the stock exchange. So there are over 20 ETF providers um, in the Australian market providing over 200 ETFs for investors um, to use. Although there's four major players that make up really um, over 80% of the market. And, and these you might be familiar with, Vanguard, iShares, BetaShares, um, and SPDR. So have a look um, at these major players' websites. They've also got some really good um, investor education um, and different charts that you can learn from um, on all those websites as well. So to finish up, let's take a look at, um, a co let's compare actually an ETF that as a Verve member, as of June 2020, you're currently invested in. And let's see how this stock stacks up in our, um, in our comparison chart. So we're gonna look at uh, beta shares 
uh, Global Sustainability Leaders um, ETF. And the um, code or, or ticker is ETHI. So if you're um, on your computer, you can um, have a look at that. Maybe if you're if you're on the Beta Shares website and you, and you find that ETF, download the fact sheet just as a tip. It gives you a bit of an easier to digest summary. So the first thing is investment objective. So this particular ETF um, that we're looking at as an example provides exposure to 200 large global stocks, not Australian um, companies, which are climate change leaders and not materially engaged in activities deemed inconsistent with sort of responsible investment considerations. So that's their goal. In terms of diversification, uh, that, um, that this ETF has exposure to over 200 stocks across nine industry sectors and over 10 countries. In terms of values alignment, well, of course, that's personal choice. You'll have to decide whether um, whether this particular ETF or whichever ETF you're comparing is aligned with your values. The fees are 0.59%. Um, the performance, so this ETF's returned 19.2% since um, it started. It tracks an index called the NASDAQ Future Global Sustainability Leaders Index, um, which has returned, um, you can have a comparison between where, again, what the index has returned and what the ETF has, can, um, has returned. And you can see then if there's, um, you know, major or minor tracking error. The issuer is, um, of course, especially if you're on their website, beta shares, the size over 668 um, million funds under management then, and the buy sell spread, again, as of the 4th of June, 2020, was between $10.50 um, and $10.69. So go on, add some ETFs to a watch list and enjoy making your own comparisons. I look forward to continuing the discussion and sharing our investment journeys along the way. See you next week.